Coming up on All About Android, it's me, Jason Howell, and Ron Richards. Florence Zion is out, so it's just the two of us hanging out. We talk all about Android 12 Developer Preview 3 and some of the design changes that are in the works. I think some people are going to like it. Some people are not. Also, a little guacamole with your assistant. Sound good, does it? Amazon's Fire Kids Pro, Red Magic's Watch, very inexpensive watch. BMW has a branded phone now. Uh, plus, we answer more than the usual slate of emails and more next on All About Android. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment. Delve into your next title on Audible with Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. All you got to do is download the Audible app and get started with a free trial at audible.com slash allaboutandroid or text allaboutandroid to 500-500. Hello, welcome to All About Android, episode 522, recorded Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. Your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And we have no Florence Ion today. Flo is out. She needed yes. a ketchup day. Not, not like tomato ketchup, but ketchup on work day, I think. Yeah, sometimes you need that. Sometimes we all need a little break. Absolutely. Hey, I was I was late tonight. We were late. We're starting later than usual um, because they took longer to make my uh, quesadilla. So sorry. Was it a good quesadilla? At least it actually was. I will say this is a little non-Android content, so I apologize to all you uh, loyal Android people who want nothing but uh, all the latest from Google and Android. But uh, in San Francisco, I used to be able to get a quesadilla, like they called it a super quesadilla, where it yeah. was cheese and meat and sour cream and guac folded in the tortilla and then grilled like a quesadilla. And yeah. uh, here in New York, uh, uh, that does not happen. Uh, they don't do and that? So they, no, no. And so I uh, ordered takeout and I put in the little thing when I typed in my order in the notes. I ordered a steak quesadilla. And I added, I said, add guacamole, add sour cream. And in the notes, I said, please put the guacamole and sour cream in the quesadilla. Oh, and I've done this before. I, nor, well, I've done this before, and I got like a little plastic thing of sour cream and a sour a plastic thing of guacamole. I'm like, no, it needs to be in. And so I asked them to do it, and they did it, and it was delicious. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. I was okay. happy. It wasn't the same. It was no El Farolito, but it mm. was uh, it was it was it was a little it was a nice little taste of the mission. Um, so, yeah, yeah. kind of take it for <laughs> granted uh, living in San Francisco and, and everything having a super component yeah. to it that does that. Uh, I kind of forget that that's just not how it is everywhere else, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, um, not only not only is Flo not here. But uh, we aren't just being rude and not introducing our guest. We don't have a guest today. We were kind of talking before the show, and it's like, you know, we don't get very many opportunities to just do the show, just hanging out the two of us. So we were like, oh, why do we need a guest today? We don't need a guest. So it's, it's it's in ten years, in ten years, I feel like the number of shows that have just been you and I, Jason, are less than ten. So this could be oh, our, way less, our, I would imagine. Uh, way less, way less. Uh, this could like, be. I'm trying annual. to think if it's more than a couple, maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Someone, Although someone there... in, sorry, so, I was gonna say someone in the chat room or the Discord via Club Twit uh, could find that out for us. That'd be great. Yeah, like I'm looking through the schedule page, and there's there's no easy way to see. There's there's a there are ways to see who was out, but there's no way right. to see who was, who was in. in. Who was in? Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking <laughs> that maybe when when Gina. Um, ended her time on the show that there may have been some moments in there, some shows in there where it was just yeah. you and I. But I think I think we ended up booking so many guests to kind of fill <laughs> yep. fill her vacancy during that time. So I don't and, think this happens very often. And we booked Flo and then she became a permanent and it was great. Right. And, and, and yeah, it goes. Time. Yeah. That's how it goes. So That's how it I flows. Was, I was I was doing an episode of I Fanboy and I was plugging this show and I was saying how I was so proud of the fact that it's you know ten years of all about Android and those guys get a little jealous because I've been doing that show with them for fifteen years um, <laughs> but still uh, still very lucky to be on two shows for more than a decade 
That's lucky, right. sad, confused, all, all, all the, all the emotions. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Just let the tears flow, Ron. Uh, let's. Uh, speaking of tears, we've got some news. I have no idea what that means, but let's go with it anyways. It's time for the news, Bert. Wow, he really did that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard from a credible source, though. Like what? That uh, guacamole, it stops more than just hunger. On oh. Android news. That's true. Doesn't it? I mean, I'm suddenly hungry, so you're right. It, 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 I don't know what it's doing to my hunger. We're going to talk about guacamole in a second. Well, probably more like a moment or a minute or a few minutes even. Before we talk about guacamole, we're going to talk about Android 12 Developer Preview 3 because when these are released, we like to at least give them a mention. I flirted with the idea of installing this uh, this developer preview on my daily driver on the Pixel 4 XL. I actually put out a poll on Twitter. I was like, should I do it? And I think the majority of people said I should. And I started to only to then change my mind because I just kind of forgot in the process that I had not apparently unlocked uh, this phone. So in order for me to do that, I would have had to unlock the phone which would have wiped my phone and I didn't feel comfortable wiping my phone. I, I like in that moment I was like, yeah, I guess I could, a, but I've got so much stuff on here that like, I, I want to take my time and not rush through it. And because I might lose some like music ideas or something. So I decided not to. It's, it's, it's a, it's a heavy finger that hovers over the wipe my device button. Right. Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, it's hard to, but it's funny though. Cause even now, but even more so now than in the past, so much of it is backed up to the cloud. Yes. In that I, I really wonder what is local that you would have lost. You know what I mean? Like, I, I well, actually, it, yeah, it, I can I can tell you, like, my, my main concern is an app that I've featured on this show called Dolby On, which is, it's an audio recording app that primarily I use it when I have, like, a flash, like, uh, idea for a song. If, if I, an idea pops in my head, I find a guitar and I and I just kind of play it a little bit until I get, am able to get the idea sounding somewhat similar to what's in my head. I pull out Dolby on and I record it there because that idea is going to leave if I don't do it right away. So two and questions. So then it's for like you. there. <laughs> so so two que two questions for you. One, yeah. do you have guitars strategically placed throughout your house just to capture these moments? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> if I could pick up the, the camera cause it's mounted right now, it'd be really yeah. difficult, but there's a guitar on the bed and there's, yeah. uh, there's three guitars downstairs. So yeah. All right. I so have, yeah. So have, you have, you have strategically placed guitars. Bravo. Yeah. Secondly, does Dolby on not have a cloud storage option? It has the ability to share out to anything, so, which is usually what I end up doing. No, but not automatically saving to a Google drive or Dropbox or something like that. No, um, that would be that would be nice. It might also be costly because you know they're large, uncompressed audio files, or maybe they're compressed. I don't know how they record it, but um, that could, depending on how much you're recording, that could take up a lot of cloud space. Usually, what I this is so not Android 12 related, but usually what I end up doing is I record into Dolby On, and then I immediately export that audio file out into Evernote where it is stored in the cloud, and then it's also attached to like lyrics and stuff like that. Um, but sometimes I don't, and that's the problem. My laziness kind of gets the best of me. And then now I'm in a position where I can't wipe my phone because I know there's things yep. on there that I haven't moved off yet. So I don't, and I've definitely done the thing where I just rush through it. And then three months down the line, I'm like, I need to find that thing. And then I realize, oh, it's gone forever. So it's not the end of the world, but it sucks nonetheless. So anyways, that's my long way of saying that I did not end up installing a developer preview three on my phone, though I still might. Because I really want to kind of, I, I know this is, I, from what I understand, this is the last developer preview before the beta channel starts or the beta track begins. Um, so maybe I'll just end up waiting for the beta track. That's only going to be like three weeks from now, probably. But um, very curious to kind of see where this is heading because, you know, we've already talked many times on this show about what the expectation is and what the developer previews have already shown um, looks like, you know, more and more with every release, we're, we're realizing that this is going to be a big design uh, redux. So prepare yourselves, whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. I sort of kind of have this feeling that like all of these designs that we're seeing in advance that are kind of, you know, 
Uh, some people are liking, some people are like, holy cow, please don't do that to Android. I kind of have this feeling that when they finally kind of push it out into a stable like beta release, or maybe they don't do the full design release until the official release happens. But when they get there, I have a feeling it's going to be toned down or be kind of a more respectable, not quite so jarring transition. Maybe it will, though, but some of the stuff we're seeing right now is pretty jarring. I don't know. I appreciate your optimism. I think it's going to be jarring. I think it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be very uh, decisive and it's going to be polarizing. That's my prediction. OK. All yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Wade County. Uh, hello, Wade. Uh, in chat says the brightness bar is ugly with three yeah. U's. I don't think you're alone in feeling that way, Wade. Um there is a link, Burke, if you want to go to it, the Android Police link, which is the fourth one that I put in the doc. And it's kind of a little bit about kind of the focus on some of these design uh, design changes, you know, a lot more rounded corners throughout, um, a lot, you know, like that screenshot on the right, which isn't the hugest transition, but they're definitely going for this more bubbly look. And, uh, you know, as you as you kind of go through some of the other images, you see a lot of examples of this in a developer preview three. And then the last image down at the very bottom is the uh, difference between the on screen volume uh, kind of uh, overlay on the current version of Android next to the on screen volume overlay of, you know, the upcoming version. And yeah, it's a, it's a big difference. It's very rounded, very bold and big and bubbly. And that's going to make some people happy. It's going to give other people, you know, many reasons to eye roll. It's, so. it's like it's like Ooh, it's like the baker. It's like the bastard child of material design. Right? It's like material yeah, design. Yeah, what are they going to call it? It's it's like material design taken way too far i mean that is a thick honker of a volume slider like if, that, if that's the visual language of this i think i do think it's gonna be polarizing i think it's we're going from a very slim i mean look at the volume control currently on pixel it's a little line with a dot right yeah there there's a yeah. side by side right? yeah like that is bananas in terms of you a can't difference. get more opposite yeah between yeah. the two they're like polarized night and day um, so yeah, uh, XDA dove a little deeper on all this stuff and they say, you know, much of this again, we already knew, but they say major quick settings redesign that's in the works and we're seeing uh, hints of that quick settings tiles, uh, getting a change in look also quick setting tiles for alarm and for wallet, a uh, game mode, which we heard about early on, uh, for a game, uh, optimization settings, that sort of stuff. One handed lock screen for tablets. That's interesting. We, we've seen some of the changes for the lock screen coming to the phone, which I actually like because I've always thought the lock screen on Android is okay but could be better. So I'm curious to see how that improves it. Um, as far as as far as the uh, the code entry is what I mean specifically. Uh, better wall base, uh, wallpaper based theming for dark wallpapers apparently. App hibernation, which we talked about I think last week. Uh, apparently there's a hint that the next Pixel stand is gonna have a fan similar to what we see in the warp charge. Um, was it called the warp? The, I can't remember, the wireless warp charge uh, device for OnePlus devices. Um, and then a bunch of other hidden changes. But um, yeah, the, the design is going to be a big point in this one. I'm curious to see where it continues uh, to develop. But so, yeah, that's Android 12 DP3 in a nutshell. Um, I, I I can't believe that it's April and we're at at the almost at the end of the developer preview track. Like this is, yeah. I feel like we're on turbo with it, with this release. It's going to be, you know, you'll get you'll have a, a couple like two like one to three rounds of the beta, and then what? We're out in July, August or so. I guess that's on track. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I it's mean, totally yeah, because you got track. IO IO coming up in May. Yeah, maybe it is on track. Maybe I just maybe I got a sense of the the developer preview a little earlier than usual. But uh, I don't know. It just feels earlier than usual. I don't know. I well, I do. If, if memory serves, I do think the developer preview hit maybe a tad earlier than it had been. It's just it's just interesting um, the fact that we have such insight into these betas now. Uh, that we didn't have before, so it ultimately makes it makes us feel like 
there's always something new coming out, right? Like the like the new version. It's like a a, a real version of Android that that hits all consumers releases and literally a couple of months later we're starting to see the developer preview. There's no like real sync time for these things. For the people that really follow this stuff. For everyone else it's like they they aren't they have no idea and they don't care, but uh it's just interesting to me. It always it, there's like little surprise because we're so in in um involved in the process leading up to the next version that there is no big drop that's why that's why maybe the design aspect of things you know maybe that could end up being a big surprise when it when they drop the official release maybe there will be like okay that was all kind of preamble to get to this and that's kind of what i'm hoping is that when they get to the this drop um it's kind of like okay whew, all right calm down everybody it wasn't it wasn't quite as bananas as, as it seemed like it was going to be we'll see though <laughs> We'll see. All right, cool. But what we'll also see is a new feature that Google is testing that I secretly hinted at at the top of the show. Um, but this new feature might be a way to say goodbye to the uh, watchword, hey, G, to trigger assistant, at least for certain actions. Uh, some Android 11 users saw a new setting appear in assistant called guacamole. There was the little see earlier. I had dinner and guacamole and my quesadilla. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh -huh. um, uh, <laughs> though uh, guacamole was non functioning in the option, uh, and what it said was quickly get things done with guacamole. Uh, it allows for skipping saying, hey, G, to do things like managing alarms, timers, and calls. So you could just say stop, snooze, answer the call, decline the call, instead of having to do the watchword uh, ahead of that. Uh, no word, no watchword, no word on when this will roll out uh, to all phones and be fully functioning. Um, and this is actually kind of the conversational stuff that the assistant already does with Google, on Google Home, where you can, you know, you can say stuff to Google Home and it knows that you're talking to it. Sometimes it doesn't know you're talking to it, but still. Um, but you, can, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a fun uh, assistant. Uh, in the conversational mode, by the way, Jason, that you'll appreciate. As everyone knows, and I know some people don't like it when we talk about it, but I, we've got kids. I've got kids. And uh, my son has been going through a cookie monster phase, and so we play the song C is for Cookie. And uh, mm. the version on YouTube Music has Cookie Monster talking, saying, I wonder what words start with C. Cookie starts with C, and then he starts singing it. And so I would say, hey, G, play C is for Cookie, and it would play that preamble, and I would keep because the song hasn't started. I keep my son engaged, and I go, "What words start with C?" Like I'm repeating Cookie Monster and asking him. And then Google pauses the music and goes, "Some words that start with C are," and starts listing <laughs> words. And I'm like, "No, I, I didn't say the watch word. I'm I asked it the was question." Listening. And it was still yeah. in the phase, of, so it's funny how that works. But um, but the idea of rolling this out for your phone and in a way that is very functional um, is interesting, but also could be chaotic for those reasons. Because if you're holding your phone and you tell someone to stop something, is it going to stop playing the music? You know, like how does it know you're talking to it about it? That's my question. So I, don't I know, what do you think, think. Yeah, I mean, I know that with. With my Google Home, we use it all the time, especially in the kitchen for cooking, right? Set timer for five minutes and then the timer goes off. I've got myself in the habit. It took a long time, but I've got myself in the habit of not saying, hey, G, stop the timer. I just say stop and it stops. And it seems to work really well, actually, with, with the timer. I don't know how that would uh, work with like music controls because I don't know that they have that without a wake word on the Google Home necessarily. Like I don't think you could yeah. you could just spark out like skip to the next track without the hey G on the Google Home. I don't think that would work. Right. But definitely, but, but when you're talking about an alarm, like that device Stop. is in a specific yeah. state at that moment. There is an alarm playing. It's like it's played the alarm sequence and now it's there. And so it knows it's there. So therefore it's now listening for just that word. I right. think I'm assuming that's how it works. And to that end, I, w I don't see why it, it wouldn't work just as easily on a phone for that. But how, how you do that same type of thing with music, I don't know, because an alarm is a very specific momentary thing that, okay, there's an alarm going off. I need to turn it off. Music is like this ongoing thing that is, you know, maybe it's always in the background and everything. So is it always listening? That would be chaotic or that has, it definitely has the potential to be pretty chaotic. So I don't know how that's going to work. We'll find out if they ever roll it out. That's for sure. So, are they going to actually um, call it guacamole, or is that a? Is that's got to be a? That's got to be an internal name. Thing, that's got. Right? You can't. I mean, yeah, that's going to confuse normal users. 
So, yeah. um, yeah, it's a little weird, <laughs> a little weird, little, I want weird. to know the story behind guacamole, but yeah, whatever. well, if only we knew this, if only we knew the story behind guacamole and if only there was a platform to create a, uh, bite-sized episode about it. Oh wait, there was, and then it died. It was called Quibi. Um, this isn't <laughs> Android specific, but longtime listeners, at least listeners in the past year knew how fascinated we were by the, uh, by the adventure of Quibi. Um, and if yes. you're wonder if you're wondering what would happen, to all that sweet, sweet Quibi content uh, after they died. Uh, well, now we know. Actually, I heard about this a few weeks ago, and it's interesting as more information is coming out about it. Um, Quibi was all of Quibi's assets was acquired by Roku, uh, who you might recognize from the set top boxes and dongles and the streaming services. Um, Roku is actually aiming to compete in the streaming wars of the original content, and there was a whole big library of content from Quibi that they could that could jumpstart them with this. So the first round of Roku original content will be more than 75 of the short content from Quibi. Um, some of that content never even aired on Quibi before it died. So some stuff that, that's that's totally new and nothing to do with Quibi. Um, the content will appear on the Roku channel for free later this year. Um, but no word, and the big question is whether or not it will be portrait or landscape. And that's what I find fascinating because I will give Quibi this – at least they tried to create a new paradigm for watching video on a phone by shooting it in a way where it worked portrait or landscape, depending on which way you turned your phone or how you were watching it or whatnot. Um, I got to imagine Roku is not doing that as uh, definitely on TV, like on streaming on a on TV, it's going to yeah. be a uh, landscape, but I don't even know if there's a Roku, is there a Roku streaming app that you can watch on your phone? Like I can't imagine. I they've, think that they're, I think that there is. There's there a Roku be. mobile app. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I will be shocked if they, if they implement like the the hot switching content, uh, hot switching technology that that Quibi had developed. Um, but yeah, I, I just would be shocked. So. Although the Roku app, okay, the, the Roku app seems to be more of a control for the device. Although as I scroll down on the page, yeah, I know very little about Roku to be honest. Yeah, I never had one. Does. Um, but it does say free TV on the go. You can stream the Roku channel uh, in the app. So, yes, that is a part of it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I highly doubt the Roku app is going to do the dynamic switching. Um, yeah. But it'll be interesting to see which one they – they're going to default to the landscape because probably all yeah. of their other content is landscape anyways. So it's going to stay in that. But, oh, man, the story of Quibi is just – it's just remarkable. What a uh, what a remarkable what a, failure! What a yeah! What a what a how how quickly they burned out, it burned oh, hot and fast. So yes, <laughs> totally, indeed, fascinating. All right, let's take a break. We've uh, in in this show in the show tonight we've got our next up we're going to be talking about hardware and then we've got a bunch of email. Um, so it's kind of a little bit different tonight, but. Different is fun as well. So stay tuned for that. Up, up next, though, want to thank the sponsor of this episode. And I am thrilled to welcome back uh, to All About Android. It's so great to have Audible uh, back as a sponsor. I'm, I, I continue to be an Audible fanboy. I mean, I've been an Audible subscriber for so many years at this point. I don't know how big my library is. Every month, you know, I'm racking up those, uh, those credits. Um, if you've ever wanted to, you know, read a memoir, but you just don't have the time. That's that's a problem I've had so so many times. It's like I don't have the time to sit down and read something, but I have plenty of time to listen to something. If I'm taking my dog for a walk, or I'm you know driving the driving back from dropping the kids off at swim uh, practice, all that kind of stuff. Those are those are moments that I can fill with like learning or enjoying an audiobook. Um, so. Now you can kind of fill in that time yourself as well. If you haven't checked out Audible, you really need to. Uh, when you're driving, when you're cooking, cleaning the house, relaxing, you can listen to amazing audiobooks with Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks. It's really <laughs> intense, the amount of audiobooks that you have to choose from, ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business motivation, the whole gamut. You name it. You're, you're probably going to find it in the Audible app. Get original entertainment from top celebrity creators, thousands of popular and binge-worthy podcasts even, they're now offering their newest plan, Audible Plus. Now, Audible Plus gives you full access to their popular Plus catalog. 
Audible Plus is all about giving members a chance to listen to and discover new favorites and explore different formats like the exclusive Words Plus music series or maybe a podcast you never considered before. Even They, they even have theatrical performances, which is just so cool. You can listen all you want to thousands and thousands of popular audiobooks, uh, original entertainment, and podcasts, all including uh, ad-free versions of your favorite shows and exclusive series. They're all available to download or stream, so you can listen anywhere, anytime, on any device. You'll never lose your spot. Audible is so good about that, keeping your spot between devices. To use your Audible membership, you'll need to download the Audible app, of course. The Audible app is free. It can be installed on all smartphones and all tablets and even has, you know, neat modes for when you're driving. It has like a car mode that gives you just the essential buttons, blows everything up so that you're not like fumbling through this tiny little interface on the screen. It's really nice. Audible um, ad reads are always so much fun because we get to talk a little bit about what we're listening to right now. And I actually just started an audiobook about a week and a half ago by the recommendation of my wife who was also reading it. And she, as she was reading it, she was like, God, Jason, as I'm listening to this, I keep thinking of you because I've heard you talk like this before and you need to read this. I have a feeling it's going to speak to you. It's by Elizabeth Gilbert and it's called Big Magic, uh, Creative Living Beyond Fear. And I'm so inspired by this audiobook right now. It's just, and it's read by uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of the book. And it's just all about like the creative process and what it means to be creative. We are human beings. So instinctively, we are one of one of the only species that just like by our nature, we are creative. And I've heard so many people say, oh, I'm not very creative. I can't make art. I can't make music. It's like, that doesn't mean you're not creative. You're not creative making art or you're not creative making music, but you are very creative because we all are. That's how we live our lives. We figure out ways to create these things that make our lives easier or bring us uh, excitement or happiness or whatever. It's just a really inspiring audiobook, and I'm just loving it. I'm totally digging it. And I'm always looking for moments throughout my day to listen to this audiobook. So, um, so that's my recommendation. Big magic, uh, pretty awesome stuff. I don't know. Are you listening to, to anything right now, Ron? That you want to feature or highlight? Anything that's um, caught your attention? I, I wish I was, uh, but I'm currently not. But yeah. if I was. Um, I know that there's I'm behind on a bunch of reading and one that I'm uh, excited to read uh, is about uh, is the what's my god, which I'm pretty sure is on audible, but it's about the history of the movie Goodfellas. Um, oh, yeah. OK. And yeah. And uh, I know that if I could get something on audible, it would be that. Yeah. Made Men, the history of Goodfellas. Made Men. Um, yes. Yeah. That audio book yeah. is on audible. Yes. Made Men, the story of Goodfellas. That would 11 be- hours and 42 minutes. That would be the choice, my choice now, if I had a commute or any sort of opportunity to do anything to myself. But I don't. But when I will, <laughs> I will use Audible and I will listen to Made Men, The Story of Goodfellas by Glenn Kenny. So Yeah, good good pick. That that actually sounds super interesting. I would love that. How many times have I seen that movie? I would love to, uh, I would love love to check that out. Good pick. So many audiobooks. Uh, and so many more uh, that, that you can find that will, you know, light you up and inspire you and everything. So what are you waiting for? Delve into your next title on Audible with Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. All you have to do is download the Audible app and get started with a free trial at audible.com slash allaboutandroid or text allaboutandroid to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E audible.com slash all about Android or text all about Android to 500 500 and you can start your free trial today. You will not regret it. Audible is awesome. So great to have them on board. Thank you audible for sponsoring this episode of all about Android. All right. It's time to talk about a little hardware that's up next. Do you remember do you remember a time in our life when Amazon announcing new tablets would be like at the top of the news block? Would be yeah, it was, it would it be was a big news. deal there for a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it was funny cuz yeah. I was on Amazon uh the other day and I was like, "Oh, they released new tablets." Oh, and I just I just I, like I didn't even uh, whatever. But here we are. <laughs> uh Amazon announced an updated Fire HD 10 tablet 
for $150, as well as the 10 plus tablet for $180. Um, the Amazon Fire HD 10 and 10 plus feature a 10% brighter display, full HD, three or four gig of RAM, up from two gig in the 2019 model, up to 64 gig, uh, gig of storage, up to one terabyte micro SD, and a 12 hour battery life, uh, plus, it's got wireless charging, which is pretty cool. Um, and also in a series of tablets called Kids Pro, and we know that you know Amazon Fire tablets, they've made, ki they've made kid-friendly tablets. Uh, these are aimed at older children now. The previous tablets were aimed more at the younger, younger kids. Um, these tablets uh, have got a design and content that are aimed for kids six to 12. Uh, it's got a slimmer case. If you remember, the the younger kid tablets were very puffy and droppable. Yeah. Um, these are a little more nimble, a little more, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but they, uh, you know, but uh, they come at a price. Uh, so a 10-inch one is $199 and includes the tablet, a one-year subscription to the Amazon Kids Plus program, and a two-year warranty. Um, and there's also a 7-inch version for $100 and an 8-inch version for $140. And I got to say... As my kids are getting a little older, I mean they're still in the younger range. They're yeah. two now, but but as um as we we're getting back, to, you know, hoping to get back to some semblance of normal and travel, I'm starting to think, well, what 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 device are we going to put in their face to keep them quiet on the flight? Uh, and the Amazon Fire tablet might be the choice. Um, you know, I think it's I honestly, it's very shocking to me that they haven't had a ages six to twelve version of this sooner. I feel like they've had those kids' tablets, those Fisher Pricey kind of tablets, uh, for a while. But I've always wondered, mm -hmm. like, well, what about the older kids? You know. Um, so this is probably a good uh, a, a good choice if you're a parent. You're looking for a low cost quality tablet that you can control the experience um, for your kids. Yeah, and you get that um, service. I can't remember the name of the service that that you know they get access to like all of that content for a year. I mean, for parents and especially, I got to say, you're you're kind of your kids are almost at that that prime, no pun intended, prime age for um, for their the Amazon tablets because with that content that's kind of included with it for at least a, I think it's a year maybe two, but I think it's at least a year you get you know access to just tons of like video content. Um, you know, books, uh, apps, all this stuff that's that's targeted at kids, and it's it's just kind of like a sandbox for them to play in. Yep. Uh, it's kind of hard to to pass it up. I could never get over the fact that it was not re it was not like the Android that I was used to, and I think I think I realize now like if I had kids that young now, I probably, it would probably be a different story. Like I probably get over it now, but I think early on when they first started rolling these out, we were early on in this show and I just, it's almost like I felt, felt like I, you know, like I was turning my nose up at, at Amazon. You're not doing it right. You're not doing it the good way. So <laughs> therefore I'm not going to give you, you know, my money and my, I'm going to teach my kids how to use real Android and not Amazon Android. Um, I think I'd do that a little different now. And I think, um, yeah, I, I think well, at, I th at some point here soon, you'll probably, I'm guessing, find yourself in a position where you're pricing these things and looking at what they offer. Mm -hmm. And that's when you realize like for kids that age, this is actually, these are pretty compelling devices. Yeah. And the thing is, is that like, I, I got on the Amazon Fire tablet early for my parents. I got my mother an Amazon Fire tablet because she was a voracious reader and wanted a simpler kind of Android um, experience, etc. Um, and I remember having that same frustrations with the with the Amazon version of Android. That was like what six years ago. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. how long? I mean, like th these have been in the you know, and it's evolved and all you know, like. It, it, and 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 while I haven't played with one of these in a while, looking at the screenshots of these new tablets, it certainly looks better than what I remember. And it looks like, you know, I got to imagine that it's probably a better experience. Um, so, yeah. So, I, you know, I, th I do th I, you know, it will be an easy choice when I'm ready to buy a tablet for my kids to just go to Amazon and get a seven inch one for a hundred bucks and just try it out, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, and you have. You have you have two young ones, uh, yeah. so you know you get a deal when you buy two at once. You save twenty five percent on them. I need different so, colors Amazon. or something. I'm going to need some sort of like totally. territorial. Yes. Yeah. 
Although Absolutely they although they keep true. swapping, they keep giving like one is there as one as the other ones, and they they trade back and forth. But it'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Yeah, so. yeah. They they <laughs> also um, I didn't put this in the notes, but they also um, are rolling out some productivity um, kind of accessories. They've got like an attachable keyboard and case that fits it. And also, um, thank you. Who was it in chat? It was uh, Scooter X in chat. Posted the link that. Um, Amazon announced that they're bringing Microsoft's Office and OneNote apps uh, to the Fire tablets and everything. So it definitely looks like Amazon's kind of broadening uh, the scope of these tablets to be like, hey, you know, this isn't just, you know, that underpowered media consumption device that everybody pegs it uh, as. It can be more than that. And here are the ways that, you know, maybe maybe it's a good uh filler for that price category, like 200 bucks, $150. You can still get a tab an Android tablet that does things more than just consume uh, media. So, so yeah, there you go. Um, let's see here. So this caught my eye only because anytime we talk about red magic on this show, it's always a gaming phone. Well, now <laughs> apparently we have a gaming watch. No, it's not at all a gaming watch. Uh, I don't even know what a gaming watch would be, but it's the $99 red magic watch. Uh, and if the one plus watch didn't whet your appetite, maybe this one will. Uh, so like I said, 99 bucks. Blood oxygen monitoring, uh, GPS on board, 15-day battery life that can go more than that, depending on how you know what you know if you have GPS running all the time or not at all, or that sort of stuff. Very minimalist design. So actually, you know, in some ways the design kind of looks. I mean, aside from the side, but the the front, the face of the watch really looks a lot like what we saw with the OnePlus watch. It does have two of the. I don't know watch lingo, but two of the little prongs on the side uh, <laughs> for for uh, for interacting. Yes, those. Thank you for the for the mouse pointer. Um, One point three nine inch AMOLED round display, no Gorilla Glass. So I would say that means be careful. Like, kind of kind of feel like not having some sort of glass protection on a smartwatch is a bad idea. But hey, it's ninety nine bucks. So there you go. Five ATM uh, water resistance. Uh, so that's that's not a bad uh, feature to have in 99 bucks. Not Android o Wear OS though. So similar to what OnePlus and a lot of other uh, smartwatch manufacturers are doing, they're eschewing the Wear OS to go with their own kind of proprietary uh, solution. So you know we'll we'll see how that is uh, once this launches. Uh, fitness focus band, 16 activity tracking modes. Really, kind of, you know, from a price perspective, competing with the OnePlus Watch 159, the Galaxy Watch Active at 149, the Fitbit Versa 2 149. Um, 99 bucks is a pretty inexpensive smartwatch. I don't know how good it's going to be, but there you go. And I think it just doesn't deliver on the idea, on the concept of a gaming watch, even though it doesn't promise to be that. But I just thought that's what Red Magic was. Apparently, I'm wrong. Well, they, they're diversifying in this marketplace, you know, like they, they, sure. they don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? They're like, listen, you know, we might be more gaming, but we got a pretty good idea for a watch. So what do you think? Um, <laughs> we don't have a watch yet. Will you buy it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know gotta, who's you, buying these watches. You got to you got to start somewhere. If they're, if, you know, someone's yeah. really into the watch business at Red Magic. They got to start somewhere. So, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. So if any of you end up picking up the Red Magic watch, let us know. AAA at twit.tv. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Well, if you're looking for a gaming phone, though, because we all know there's so many of you. There's that sarcasm again. There's so many of you gaming phone people out there. Um, is it IQ? Am I pronouncing that correctly, Jason? I IQ don't know. I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> IQ. 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 O -O, uh, which is a Vivo sub brand, has a new premium gaming phone, and it's BMW. BMW branded. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. BMW, the luxury car that you know and love. Uh, this phone is called the IQ7 Legend, and it features a tricolor racing stripe design, which I actually kind of dig. Uh, and our video viewers saw it briefly on on, on the video. There it is uh, on the video. Yeah. It's the red, white, and blue kind of uh, very kind of uh, racing French kind of look to yeah. it. Uh, totally. So it's running a Snapdragon 888 
with 8 gig or 12 gig of RAM and 128 or 256 gig of storage. Um, it's got a 6.62 inch OLED, uh, 120 hertz display, HDR 10, 10 plus certification. Uh, it's got no shoulder buttons, so don't look for them. Instead, it's got a new on screen virtual joystick control pad with pressure sensitive digital buttons which is crazy. Uh, it's got a huh. 48 megapixel primary wide lens, a 6, 13 megapixel ultra wide, a 13 me megapixel telephoto. Um, and this is focused at the Indian market starting at around $535. Uh, so this is fascinating. What do you, what do you make of this, Jason? Mm. This is a, a, it's an Indian phone. So it's not really mm. in our market, right? It's going at that, at that, uh, that region. And I guess they're leveraging whatever, you know, whatever value BMW has as a, as a brand name. I, I yeah. it's weird that it's BMW. Yeah. Well, I do think that, okay. So first of all, cousin of Jean chat says I coup, according to a link at GSM arena. I coup. Um, okay. I coup. Okay. Thank you. I coup. Um, I, coup. I do think as, as a brand, this is a brand that obviously we don't recognize. We're not very familiar with because it's just not here. I don't, I don't think it's a, a small brand or a minor brand. Yeah. Uh, in like the Chinese market, um, in the Indian market, perhaps. So um, I don't know. It, it is interesting to have a phone by a brand that I'm not familiar with have a branded sp partnership with a company like BMW. <laughs> yeah. But that, I, that probably just speaks to the fact that this is a notable brand elsewhere in the world uh, that they're able to make that deal with. I mean, you know, BMW is a very respected automotive brand, so I'm sure they don't yeah. go into deals like this lightly. Um, and as far as so, the styling is concerned, like I actually think like it's it's got its own charm. I, I think it's kind of cool looking. I agree with you. I think that design is pretty good. Um, it's interesting. So IQ was started in February 2019 um, as a subsidiary of Vivo, but now they're they're operating independently of Vivo. And um, according to, I'm going to look at this attribution, uh, uh, according to uh, IQ or uh, Gizbot.com in, in February 2021, uh, they are the number one smartphone in the Indian market as of February 2021. So wow, IQ, that did not take them long. <laughs> that did not take them long at all. I would like to see what the attribution is there, according to Gizbot. But uh, but apparently, IQ is the number one um, with wow. only 10, 10 phones out there, which is uh, and that is a very uh, busy marketplace. So uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yep, no kidding. Um, uh, so there you go. I don't understand what an on-screen virtual joystick control pad with pressure-sensitive digital buttons actually means. Like, I want to, I want to see that. Does that mean that there's pressure-sensitive buttons under the display where the on-screen joystick? I don't, I don't that's understand what, it sounds what that means. Like. But how would you that's know weird. where the so the is the on the on-screen joystick has got to be at the OS level, not the game level, right? Because wouldn't the yeah. on-screen joystick change per game based on the UI design for the game? I would think so. And if that's the case, if it's built into a certain part of the display, that just sounds very messy depending on the game yeah. that you're playing. Uh, so I don't know how that, you know, or how that interacts with the game version of the on-screen joystick. I don't know. I'm very confused yeah. with that whole aspect, and I would love to see what that actually uh, refers to. That's so. Amazing. Yeah, because as Scooter X points out, and is very obvious, like a phone display is already touch sensitive, but this is it this is, would be yeah. pressure sensitive, is the difference, yeah. Scooter X. So, I don't know. Interesting, nonetheless, and uh, kind of a cool style. So, you go, Iku. All right. Like I said earlier, we're changing things up a little bit for this episode. So up next, we're going to start off with a few of the well, about half of the six emails that we have in today's show. Starting here with, uh, well, if you want to send us an email, you can. AAA at twit.tv. Uh, our first email is, let's see here, is from Mike, who says, Hey, AAA crew, as always, thanks for a great and consistent show. Oh, thank you. Uh, I listen to the podcast version every Wednesday morning without fail. In response to the email of the week about the paramedic who uses the Samsung Note 4 so that he can readily change the replaceable battery. Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't say it, but then I read it and I was like, oh, I guess I did. <laughs> I was so confused there for a second. 
Uh, he said, I recommend uh, he considers a battery case. There are still a few battery cases available for the Note 4 on Amazon. I've been using the Zero Lemon battery case uh, since my Note 3 and currently use the Zero Lemon 8,000 milliamp hour battery case with my Samsung Galaxy S9. My previous job had me in the field pretty much all day thus not able to use the recharging cable. The Zero Lemon battery cases work great. They easily get me through a long day. That's 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. I have to imagine they do. 8,000 milliamp hours is a huge amount uh, with juice to spare. Normally, I always check to make sure Zero Lemon has a uh, capability battery case before I purchase a new cell phone. Um, Zero Lemon, without fail, has supported most of the Samsung S series and all Note series phones. An added plus to the battery cases is that they provide an extra layer of cell phone protection, which as a paramedic, I'm sure he would appreciate. Great recommendation, Mike. Um, yeah, because there are a lot of cases out there that have the battery baked into it. Obviously, that fills the gap or fills the need for the fact that we don't have the replaceable batteries and just the sheer fact that everybody's looking for just a little bit more juice out of the phone that they're using. So why not embed it into a case that also protects your phone if you drop it? So good recommendation. I meant to look up the Zero Lemon cases uh, before and put a I link like to I've, it. So I feel like I've heard I've heard of Zero Lemon in the past. I've heard good things. So yeah, I like the I like I like the idea of a functional case of a I mean this is the kind of modular kind of thing that like you know we and, and I feel like the the battery laden case is not new to Android we've seen these in a while but like they've evolved like the phones have and are in a spot where they're a pretty good option in case of something that you need so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wake County in chat says Zero Lemon makes good products. There you go, and you can see from the Zero Lemon site, you know, it's not just battery cases they make uh, they make all sorts of battery accessories uh, in a number of different ways uh, portable you know solar power or so solar charging power banks and all sorts of stuff uh, batteries for a Nintendo switch so uh, wireless charging pads all sorts of things so zero lemon I had not heard of them but um, now I know about them uh, so that's a good recommendation Mike thank you for sending that in hopefully that is helpful. I'm trying to remember who the paramedic was. Was it uh, David? It was David Keeler from last week. So, David, check out Zero Lemon. Maybe get a case. All right, Ron, you got the next one. All right. Uh, next email comes up from from Thaddeus. Great name, Thaddeus. Thaddeus, yeah, Thaddeus, I guess. Thaddeus, T-H. Um, Thaddeus. Thaddeus says, you've been one of my primary sources for Android News since 2011. That's 10 nice. years. Yeah. Uh, he says, I appreciate all that you do. Thank you, Thaddeus. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to get your opinion on the bottom navigation bar on Android, which over the last few years has become more and more popular with apps. These bars are driving me crazy. They worked well with hardware buttons on phones, but now Androids only have soft buttons, and I'm constantly fat fingering the back or home instead of the navigation bar or pressing the navigation bar while leaving the app. Then when you come back to the app, you've returned to a different section of the app. My solution has been to just delete the apps I can, I can and find alternatives, but that's becoming harder and harder as most official Google apps are using it now. Also, as a developer, I have to fight my designers on adding this to our apps every few months. iPhone users just don't understand. Is this just me or have you guys experienced similar pains? Do users actually prefer the bottom bar? Will this 2012 design throwback please just go away? And uh, this is a great nuanced UI. And, and here our, our video viewers can see that he has provided a screenshot uh, that is showing uh, is this is this the phone or is Google Apps I don't know which which app this actually is but you see there's a bottom action bar you have the triangle circle square navigation bar buttons and then above it you have a toolbar um, and in this screenshot there's a phone with voicemail contacts messages voicemail indicator um, and that sort of thing also like on on the Google News app. Um, an app I use a lot and, and tout and I love. Google just in general has changed their design paradigm to, to meet this both on Google New, as, Google New, Google Now, as well as um, I think Gmail has it too. Um, well, they have the component. No, they have it down at the bottom as well. Um, what they've done is they put the your user icon in the upper right-hand corner, a hamburger menu in the, in the upper left-hand corner, and then this bottom action bar with like the key – actions that you may want to take that are related to that app, at least in Google News on the bottom, there's for you, headlines, following, and newsstand, and that sort of thing. To be honest, 
I like it. And Thaddeus, I'm sorry I don't dis- I, I disagree with you here, but I do have fat fingers, but also the way we hold our phones and with our thumb, the main thing in the bottom third of the uh, region of the phone, not having with phones being so large and so long, not having to lunge my thumb all the way up to the upper portion of the app seems to make sense. This feels like more of a ergonomic decision, uh, like a, a functional design ergonomic decision than anything. Um, I don't know, Jason, what do you think? Are, have you noticed this change in design and do you, do you support it or are you against it? Oh yeah, because and I'm I'm showing it right now. Um, yeah, you know, there it Google is. has there's the Google News app, and my lower third's kind of covering it up. But yeah, you can see all of the kind of interactive elements are down at the bottom. I don't mind it at all, and maybe the difference for me is the fact that I'm doing gesture notifications, and I kind of feel from the from what um, what Thaddeus was talking about in his email is that it interacts with the back button and the the on screen navigation buttons that are there. If you're not doing gesture navigation, um, I feel like it kind of stays out of the way when I'm doing gestures because just touching down there, I'm going to touch one of those interactive elements. But then if I want to go home, it's not going to confuse it with a home button. I just swipe up and it, and it goes. So um, I don't mind it. it. It doesn't really bother me. I think in the, initially it did though when it was happening because change is hard. <laughs> yeah. And I was so used to everything being up at the top and then suddenly it's down at the bottom. And then at some point I just stopped thinking about it and you know, I'm, like I thought this email was interesting because it reminded me that I used to not like it at all. I was like, well, wait a minute, what what has changed? And all I can come up with is just the fact that like I'm so used to the gesture navigation flow now that I think I don't encounter those issues anymore. I don't counter encounter the confusion between which of those buttons, top or bottom row, I'm actually trying to press. Um, because a gesture swipe is just very different from pressing one of those buttons. So that's gotta be the difference for me. Yeah. It's subtle. It's subtle. And once you get used to it, like I don't use the gesture navigation, so I am still very much in that functional kind of thing. And it's I have noticed it in apps. And as I've done my own app development myself, I do think it makes sense. So um, but I hear you. I, I can hear your frustration. I'm sorry. Sorry, Thaddeus. Um, nope. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, especially like. It's just one of those changes that's that a uh, certain percentage of people are going to love and a certain percentage are going to hate. And I'm sorry that you're in the, the dislike yeah. category. Probably similar uh, to what we we're talking about earlier as far as, you know, design changes forthcoming on Android 12. There's going to be a lot of people that love it and a lot of people that just really don't. And, uh, and that's the tough these, thing. These things are polarizing. When you're in the when you're in the in the hate it kind of camp. And you just see every developer following that. You're, it's like it's like trying yeah. to swim upstream, and it can be so frustrating, totally. and, it, and it can be such a a, a bummer to your experience um, until one day you don't realize, and you don't really care as much, right? Or there's something that I mean that pisses you off more. So it's a- absolutely like I remember, you know, over the last few years with the gesture navigation, just using that as the example, gesture navigation starting to kind of, you know, be uh, used in a certain way on on devices. And then with the next version of Android, they changed it a little bit, whatever. And in the beginning, like I, I jumped on board, not because I wanted to, because I felt like I kind of had to, because it kind of seemed like the next paradigm for, for Android and for touch interfaces on smartphones. So, you know, for the show and what I do, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to get used to it. And yeah, it was hard for a while. It was, it was, it was change and it was different. And I was so used to kind of the precise nature of a back button, even though back buttons were never totally precise in how they operated, I knew that I could tap it and it would always go back versus, you know, swiping. And I had to remember, memorize these different directions on the screen and and whatever. And then at a certain point, you, you know, kind of like this, I just stopped thinking about it because I got used to it and I moved on. And um, then I look back and just realize like, uh, I don't want to do it the other way. I'm too used to this. So it just really depends on what you get used to, I think. And at a certain point, you get used to it. It's like so. what your tolerance is for evolution or for change. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Um, All right. Richard Davis writes in to say as a new listener to the show. Hello. Welcome to the show, Richard. I wanted to say hi and also to ask your opinions. Until last week, I was a relatively content iOS user. Wow. So you're 
new new uh, using an iPhone X, iPhone 10, which although a few years old had always worked flawlessly. That is until last week when it fell out of my pocket while fixing my roof. Ouch. Due to tight finances, I'm not in a position to simply get another iPhone, so my partner gave me her old phone, which is a Nokia 7.1 running Android 10. Although the hardware on this uh, device seems inferior to my iPhone, he's actually composing this email on it, I'm actually growing to like Android. I can actually place icons and widgets where I choose, and I love the split screen function and much more too. Anyway, on to the actual issue. I'm extremely wary of apps in the Play Store. I mainly install apps from big developers like Microsoft, Google, eBay, etc. But I worry about installing apps from smaller developers because of malware. I read about the Cam Scanner app a year or so ago having a malware component. Do you have any advice or reassurance on calming my anxiety about malware on Android? Have I got it all wrong? Am I worrying unnecessarily? And Richard, I'm happy that you wrote in because I think this is probably pretty – I think you're not alone as far as this yeah. is concerned. There seem to be stories all the time about you know malware on the Play Store. And I don't know. My view on it is those stories are – really amplify a problem that doesn't feel like it's quite as, as bad or rampant as the stories might make it seem, Right. We we used to cover them on the show uh, m way more than we do now and kind of stopped because just kind of realized like in any of the times that we're talking about these things, I've never like, God, maybe once or twice gotten an email from anyone in the 10 or 10 years that we've been doing the show that was ever actually affected by any of this stuff, yep. which is not to say that there aren't victims of this sort of thing. But I think what it is is when it boils down to it, if you are a responsible uh, user of your smartphone, you're likely never going to run into this. Maybe never is the wrong word. You're probably not going to run into this if you use good, you know, good sense, your co good common sense. What yeah, do you think, Ron? I, I, yeah, I, I want to. I'll, I'll make a. We're, we're an evening show, so I'll make a lightly more inappropriate blue kind of comparison, but like. I know growing up in the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of like communication and concern over STDs and like you had to be safe out there and all stuff like that. But if you're being responsible, if you're protecting yourself, if you're doing all the things, then you'll be fine, right? Like that's the that's the, the, the kind of allegory that I kind of go with. If you're going and getting APKs from random places, if you're using rogue app stores, if you're if you're getting your apps from sketchy locations, you make yourself potentially a, a victim of malware. Like that's what's gonna happen. But Google and Google, the Google Play Store has put in enough protections and have learned enough from it that, you know, I, I feel like the same thing. We've been doing this for 10 years. I've never been a victim of malware, you know, like I, it, it, and, and we try a yeah. lot of software. And the thing is, is that that topic mm. is such a clickbaity kind of topic. There's so many articles where like three million Android users are infected by this, this app, Un uninstall it right now. And I always look at those articles and it's never any app I've ever heard of that I ever use that use. And sure, there are some exceptions. There were like, remember a couple of years ago, there was those, yeah. what was that? Cheetah or whatever that, that company was. Yeah, where they, all the, mm -hmm. yeah all, all those apps were, were problems. But like I, I wasn't using any of those. So like uh, you know, it, it. Uh, yes, it's out there. Yes, it's potential. But I, I feel like if you are staying on the Google Play Store from trusted source, then you're going to be okay. That's my thought, at least. Yeah. And I yes, mean, it, I just, it really. I just, I just compared uh, apps and malware to the AIDS crisis in the '80s. By the way, in case you weren't uh, noticing. I was tracking. Yep, I got you. <laughs> it's okay, bro. Uh, yeah, I think I think what it does is it really illustrates the um, kind of the the effect of these these news stories on you know not not to like put you in a group of of iOS users, but I think that there is there are a lot of iOS users who feel and are like actively like like fear Android because of this, and you know yeah. to a large part it is because that is a really uh, that is a really easy story to be written when something like that happens. But at the same time, I don't want to diminish that it does happen, right? Like, yes, there is a risk that something like that is going to happen. I have a good feeling, though, Richard, that you are smart enough 
to know the difference when you look at a, at a page. Like you're smart enough to know that, you know, a company like Microsoft, Google and eBay, they're not going to give you uh, knowing to knowingly to themselves, they're not going to give you an app laden with malware. There are certain checks in place that, you know, have to pass your kind of sniff test in order to install an app. Take those checks and apply them to other apps that you see. When you look at, at screenshots, does it give you a good feeling when you look at those screenshots? Because sometimes you can look at screenshots and you're like, there's no way in hell I'm installing that app. Like, what, what is going on here? That It just looks sketchy. Or when you take a look at the comments and you realize the comments or the reviews, you know, they're, they're all basically the same thing but uh, worded slightly differently. You know, th there's just these certain clues that make it, I, I don't know if it protects you 100%, but it gets you pretty darn close. Like Ron was saying, we've reviewed thousands of apps on this show, which means we've installed thousands of apps over the years on our devices. And I've never once encountered this. So it's an easy story to write in the same way that it, you know it's it's easy to write the same story about you know PCs back in the day being laden with with malware and and everything like that um you just got to use common sense and uh i think you'll be okay <laughs> i think you're going to be okay you're going to find that you're going to install a lot of apps and you're going to be all right but there is no 100% i'm sorry i can't give you a guarantee yeah, it never is but i hope just, uh, yeah be yeah. smart open yeah. be smart and welcome to Android. It's really not scary over here. It's not. They like to say that it is, but it's not. You're okay. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. And thanks for watching and, and uh, emailing us. We do appreciate it. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a few more of your emails. That's just half of the emails. More of your emails coming up. I, I love feedback of Palooza. It's the best. Feedback um, Palooza continues. Ron, what you got? Our next email comes from Vic, who's got a short one. He says, hello, my two-year-old uses a Samsung Tab A for his music lessons, uh, Sago Mini School, and of course some games, etc. One day he saw me adjusting the brightness, and now he's constantly setting it to the max level, which is not good. Is there a way to lock down the notification panel so he can't swipe down and change those settings? Um, well, number one, Vic... Uh, I have two two-year-olds and neither of them are using tablets for music lessons. So like you're doing much better at parenting than I am apparently. Um, that's, cr that's crazy. Um, but that said, a uh, couple of things you can do here. One, you can either check the game mode on the device and look for a way to block the notification shade. Uh, some game modes have this. Some uh, devices have game modes that allow you to limit things as if when you're playing a game, you don't want to be distracted by things. So that might be a way to do it. Or... Uh, pin the window, uh, which is an option there too. I don't know, Jason, you've got kids who've used tablets. Uh, have you used either of these solutions? Have you run into this or? Um, well, I mean, you know, his, his kid is very young and I definitely yeah. had the experience where I gave, you know, a tablet to my kid. Like I can't, I can't pull a, an exact story out of thin air cause it was a long time yeah. ago, but definitely familiar with the situation of giving a device to my kid and them, you know, ending up somewhere else or launching something else that I didn't want. Um, and the pinning of the app I think is, is probably the easiest thing, which I think I can, Let's see here. And so, so to be clear, um, pinning pinning the app meaning to can you explain that because it's not it's, it's not right. necessarily. Like, <laughs> oh, here, let me turn the volume down. So, so I've got an app here, which oh, thank you for those twenty gems. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, okay, I've, I haven't logged in a very long time and in, in cooking fever. Um, so here I am in a game, but if I swipe down from the top, you know, my notification shade is going to come down. What what I can do on my device is I can go up and hold, and then I get this little icon right there, and I can pin it. And essentially, that pins the app to the screen. Essentially, it places it there, and I can't bring up any of my interactive elements. It'll pull that up, but it doesn't do anything. Um, so that keeps me locked into the app. I think... I can't remember. I think it's like two finger swipe up from the bottom is how I unpin it. So you saw that little toast message. Now it's unpinned and now I have access to all that stuff. So uh, I've done that many times and I've done that many times when I hand the device to my kid and I didn't want them to end up, you know, I, I still do that sometimes now when they're like, I want to look at photos. And I'm like, I know. Like that's, that's a conduit. I give you my phone and you look at photos and then I leave and then I come back and you're playing a game. I know how that game works. And so I pin it 
and they they don't realize how to unpin it, that, and they're locked that, yeah, in the Photos app. <laughs> that that requires, but that requires you to set them up and pin it, then hand them the device. Which yeah, I guess totally. when they're two, it's not like there's a when they're two, two you're like, kind of doing that anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe that'll work. But I do know also, like Ron said, some game modes have a function where you can cancel certain elements of the UI and you might be able to find I, I don't know if the Samsung uh, game mode has the ability to disable the pull down notification shade because there are games uh, many games that you can play that the interactive elements on screen if you're actually playing it the way they want it want you to you're going to end up up there and that's going to keep happening it's so annoying that's probably one of the one of one of the many reasons that people appreciate gaming phones because they have controls for those things. Um, yeah. So, anyways, Indeed. hope that hope that's helpful, Vic. Thank you for emailing. Uh, Peter writes in. This is a pretty quick one. He says, "Greetings, Jason, Flo, and Ron from sunny Queensland, where autumn is mild and winter is usually on a Tuesday." While listening to AAA episode 521 earlier today, I was trying to remember the word that fold and roll sounded like. Then I remembered definition of fold and roll. Fold and roll. F-O-L-D-E-R-O-L. -E this is a word that I'm not sure I knew existed. Fold and roll. Uh, definition one, a useless ornament or accessory. Trifle. Definition two, nonsense. And I'm not certain if by sending that in, Peter... Yes, it may have reminded you of that word, but do you also think that the fold and roll phone is a uh, useless ornament or accessory? Do you think that it's nonsense? Do you, Ron? I don't think it's nonsense. You know where I stand on this. <laughs> so Ron does not believe that the fold and roll phone is a fold and roll. The fold and roll is not a fold and roll. I do like the term folder roll. It sounds like it sounds like a uh, a, a medication. If you're on folder yeah. roll, you may experience, you know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Miriam Webster and your nonsense. All right. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the email of the week. Oh, oh, that that was there. We go. There it is. There it is. We I got heard like it the faintly. very very end of it. Very faintly. There it is. Email of the week. Thanks, you, Burke, with your finger on the email of the week button. I like to picture that there's a big button that Burke yeah. presses that says email of the week, and he just presses that red button every time I say email of the week. Yeah, I think that's the way it he goes. Press it there, though. Not yeah, today. He's, bro he's broken. Not today. He's bro <laughs> he broke the button. All right, so the email of the week. There it is. <laughs> Comes from Nick who says, my whole family is on iPhones except for me. So when I saw that T-Mobile has a deal to turn in an old iPhone for a half-off iPhone 12, I figured it was time for me to stop swim swimming against the current and join my family in the world of iMessage and FaceTime. Nick, I, I really hope this email is going in a better direction than this first paragraph, because right now I'm concerned. Uh, but anyway, so Nick says... I packed up my daughter's old iPhone as a trade-in and headed to Timo, telling myself Android and iOS are the same now anyhow. It was then that my OnePlus 6T connected to my car's Bluetooth and fired up the last podcast I was listening to. There I was surrounded by the voices of my friends, Ron, Flo, and Jason, sharing the story of a gaming phone with physical buttons. Catnip for gamers, Flo quipped. That's when I realized there wasn't a choice. iPhones would never have buttons iOS is in the fun and wild and creative place that Android's come to be. How could I say goodbye to downloading ROMs on XDA, to trying new launchers, to strange open source browsers, to Tasker, Rollables, and most of all, how could I say goodbye to U3? I did go to T-Mobile and I swapped out a phone though. I traded in my 6D for OnePlus 9. Thanks AAA, the home of the Android faithful indeed. And Nick, yeah. what a heartwarming email, truly email of the week quality. Um, <laughs> And I got to tell awesome. you, I, I, you warm my heart with your realization. You're absolutely right that, you know, iOS is good for some people, but those of us, I hate to steal it from Mr. Jobs, but those of us who think differently seem to land in Android because of things like the custom customization, the wackiness, the different hardware we get, all this great yeah. stuff. And it's so wonderful and we should celebrate it. 
Um, and the fascinating thing is in 10 plus years of doing this show, I feel like that aspect has eroded. Like we've gotten phones that look the same, that the chocolate bar phone, like so the China phone, like all the stuff that we, you know, kind of talked about. Um, but even, even then with the, with the kind of settling down and normalization of Android, we still have crazy stuff going on despite LG going out of business with their phone business, despite, you know, all this sort of stuff, we get fold and roll phones and we get gaming phones and we get rugged phones and we get all this great stuff. So Nick, we love having you as one of the Android faithful. We hope everyone listening feels the same way. Um, and yeah, let's just, let's wear our, and our green Android with pride. Why don't we? So that's right. Wear, wear that green bubble with pride. With pride. Uh, two things that wasn't a coincidence that played at the right time. That that was meant to play at that moment to convince you. And uh, what was what was the other thing? I had a, I had another thing I wanted to. I would like to tell you, Burke. It's hard to see with the brightness, but Burke sent me a photo of his finger on the email of the week button, pointing so, at it at the pointing house, at the it. tiny little button yeah it, <laughs> it, is, it is a, a tiny button. button it is a tiny button it's hard to see but it says email of the week um <laughs> so yes there is a button it's not a physical button but it is a button that says email of the week i want a big red button yeah yeah big right. like smash that button button i'm sorry nick i can't remember what my number two was but uh you're just gonna have to take number one and uh and believe that we came on your your speakers at just the right time uh, yeah. Because it was meant to be. So, it was, I oh mean, yeah, it was I remember divine, what number two was. Oh, what is it? Jason? Yes, exactly. Is that don't worry if it, any of you don't worry if you end up getting wooed over to iOS. If you end up getting an iPhone, that does not mean that you are that you have to be done with us. We have plenty True. of people who watch and listen who are on iOS. Maybe they were once on Android. Maybe they have never been on Android. They just enjoy hearing different side of the Android um, ecosystem or the sphere. So also, um, I will add. It doesn't add to that. That add to that that maybe if you go to iOS because you need your work phone is iOS. So for some reason, doesn't mean like to Jason's point that you can't stop listening. Also, doesn't mean that you may not get an Android tablet. Or you know, or get a second phone, or someone else in your family. Stay. You're still in the family. And guess what? When you're done with that iOS phone, you can always come back. You always have a home here on all about Android. So, yes, that's right. That's right. Um, so, Nick, thank you so much for writing. It's good to still have you here and know that you're not going anywhere. And now you can wear it with pride, the email of the week. There we go. All right. And with that, we have reached the end of this triumphant episode of All About Android. So much fun hanging out with you, Ron. Thank you yeah, for uh, great. doing a show solo tonight. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was awesome. I love I, uh, Jason. I could. I feel like we could talk for hours, and we we we. In fact, we have been, and we will continue to. Um, <laughs> we will but until, continue to. <laughs> until next time, you can follow me over uh, on Twitter and Instagram at RonXO um, or go check out uh, scorebit.io on the web to see all about uh, my fun pinball company where we're making devices that connect pinball machines to the Internet. You can go to the Google Play Store and download the Scorebit app. Um, please check it out. We've been working fast and furious on that thing. So uh, lots, of, lots of good stuff coming. So. Do. Definitely check that out. Um, as for me, you know, I'm here on Twit doing Twit things. So uh, twit.tv slash TNW if you want to find uh, Tech News Weekly. I'm also helping Leo by producing uh, This Week in Google, Security Now, and of course, This Week in Tech every Sunday. So even when you don't see me, you're seeing the things that I do. Uh, that's what I do here. Big thanks to Burke at the studio for pushing buttons and uh, playing horns and occasionally staying on my video just a little too long. You, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, also, thanks to Victor behind the scenes for editing and bringing you the show after it's done. Uh, just real quick, you heard us talk about it last week. Club Twit, it's a thing we're doing now. Ad-free subscription tier for all of our shows. No ads. You also get exclusive Twit Plus podcast feed and tons of extra content and then a members only discord seven bucks a month i'm not going to drone on and on about it just to tell you that we're having a blast and we plan to uh, be you know having even more fun with it twit.tv slash club twit if you want to uh, check it out and join and be part of the fun the discord is a, a total blast so you got to get in the Indeed. discord 
check it out. Um, and that is really about it. I think we'll end it there. Don't forget to wear a mask. Uh, although, you know, the, some of those those rules are, are loosening a little bit, but it's still, still a good idea. You know, uh, look out for yourself. Look out for others. Wear that mask. And thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, we publish this show every Tuesday evening. It comes late in the evening every Tuesday at twit.tv slash AAA. You can subscribe in all the different ways, all the different podcatchers. It doesn't matter. Just subscribe, and then you don't have to worry about it. When it's out, it'll appear like magic. And that's it for this week. Hopefully, we'll see Flo back on the show as well next time. So we'll see you then next week on All About Android. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations. 